Hi friends, we'll be talking about ratings and review of side hustle businesses. So in my other class, which I'm showing you now, I showed you the best 50 side hustle business you can start. So you see, content creation, print on demand, day trading, online courses, blogging, podcasting, language, you can see all of them. So I took you through several side hustle businesses that you can start as a beginner or someone that is interested in side hustle. So in this part of the class, I will take you through the ratings and review of each of them for you to decide the one that align best with you. So even though there are possible side hustle businesses that you can start, which one aligns best with you? So what are the pros and cons of each of them? So I'll be taking through the ratings and review of each of these side hustle businesses. We'll be looking at five metrics. We'll look at how easy to start, easy to maintain, how easy it is to maintain this side hustle. What is the starting cost, the budget? We'll look at how easy it is to make your first $100. For you to understand if you really want to make your $100 easily, how fast it is, how easy it is. And also we'll look at the level of competition in that business to decide if you are okay with the level of competition for you to start the business. So in this part of the class, I'll be tearing each of the side hustle businesses. There are several side hustle businesses, but I'll be going for the top 15 that you can start easily so that it will help you to start your business. My aim of taking you through this class is not just for you to learn, but rather for you to be able to start your own business and grow it and scale it, which is the title for this course. So to be able to start and scale your business. So that for you to understand it easily, we'll be looking at some number ratings from one to five. Most of you have done reviews and ratings of online when you buy something on Amazon. So it's the same rating here. If it's five, it means it's cheap and it's easy. It means it's good. Our goal is to be getting five. In an exam, you want to score five over five. So since the goal in an exam is to score everything, so which means five is good and one is bad. One means it's difficult, it's expensive. Five means it's good. Five is the number that we're looking for. And one is like the number we are trying to run away from. So one means it's difficult to start, it's expensive to start. And five means it's easy to start and it's cheap. You don't have to spend any money in order for you to start the business. I will take you through the best 15, one after the other. So because I've done a course already explaining the side hustle businesses, so I won't go into depth in explaining each of the side hustle businesses, but rather I will go into depth in reviewing them and rating them one after the other. And I told you the purpose is to help you to decide on the business you like in order for you to start. The first one we'll be starting with is print on demand. Print on demand business. And it's very good for people that have a taste for fashion. If you are someone that feel you can make a design, on t-shirt or sweatshirt, you can make a design of any choice. So this business will be extremely good for you. This design that you're seeing, I was the one that made them. And I explained how I made them in one of my courses, Print on Demand for Beginners. I'll post the screenshot of the thumbnail on the screen. So I was the one that made the design and I told you that you can sell it on Redbubble, Printful, Printify, Etsy, Amazon, and several other marketplaces. Let's look at how easy it is to start. It's very easy to start. All you need is to have an idea of what you want to design on a t-shirt. So you see this clothes I'm wearing. So there could have been a design on it. Your own part is to make the design that will be printed on a t-shirt or on a clothes like this. So it's very easy to start. You can make your design on Canva. I have another course explaining how you can start designing on Canva. It's very easy to maintain because once you've made a t-shirt and you publish it on LC, Amazon, and other marketplaces, you do nothing else to maintain it. It will be there once a customer make an order. Is the fulfillment company like Printful and Printify that will help you to print the design on a t-shirt, package the t-shirt. They even have the t-shirt themselves and they will be the one to ship it to your customer. They help you to carry out the fulfillment process. So you do nothing. Your work is mostly to do the design and put it on a website like Etsy. So it's very easy to maintain. The starting cost 
is zero dollar. You don't need to pay any money to start it. If you want to make a design on Canva, you can go for Canva free subscription. And if you are going to sell on Etsy, you can start with the free 40 listing that your first 40 listing will be free or it will be at a very small amount like less than $0.5 for you to know how cheap it can be. So the starting cost, which is the budget, is little to nothing. How easy it is to make your first $100? You are selling a t-shirt. The problem with selling a t-shirt or you're selling clothes or you're doing this print-on-demand business is that before you make your first sale, it's difficult because you don't have any review on the t-shirt design. So most people are very skeptical, just like what you will even do. You don't just go to Amazon and buy a t-shirt because you like the t-shirt, but you also check if other people have a good experience with that t-shirt. Is the design good? The quality of the clothes, is it good? So since you are starting new and there's no review, there's no rating yet, most people are skeptical to buy from you. But if you are able to get that first review on your t-shirt and hopefully it's a five-star rating and review, so it becomes very easy to scale. So making your first $100 is difficult, not because you cannot sell, but because to get the first say is difficult. The first say, the first review is always difficult. And that's what you observe as I take you through this course, that the first say and the first review are always difficult. But if you're able to get that first say and first review, it becomes very easy for you to scale, for you to grow your business. So that's why I give it one star because to get a first say and first review might be difficult. Level of competition, almost everybody is doing it. If you go to Etsy, you go to Amazon, you go to Redbubble, you will see all kinds of design on t-shirts, all kinds. If you go to Instagram shops, you will see all style, all patterns of design of t-shirt, cap, accessories, different kind of print on demand product. So the competition is very high. In fact, some people will see your own design that's unique and will go and copy it. And most likely there's nothing you will do about it. So there's stiff competition with print on demand business. So this will give you an idea if you want to start this business, what you should be thinking about. The next one we have is trading day trading, swing trading, position trading, all kinds of trading. And I told you that for trading, you need to learn about fundamental analysis and technical analysis. I gave a detail of the explanation in the first part of this class where I showed you the 15 side hustle. So I explained in depth in each of the side hustle businesses. For this part of the class, who deals with the rating and review, I will not be explaining it in depth. So is it easy to start trading? Yes, you can start from your house. It's very easy to start trading. If you have internet connection, you can even do it on your phone and it's very easy to start trading. Is it easy to maintain? No, it's difficult to maintain trading because if you have seen day traders, some of them have like five screens, four screens, and they look at each of them to see how the market is moving in order to make a decision. So day trading can be difficult at the beginning. It's not easy to maintain because you have to make sure you're making profit. So it's almost like you look at your position every once in a while to be sure that you are on the right side of the market movement. So it's difficult to maintain. In terms of the starting cost and the budget, I give you the three star. And whenever you see a three star, it means it's in between. It's not difficult. It's not easy. Somewhere in between. That's when you say three. So why do you have to give a three star rating? It's because if you are starting day trading with your own money, the more money you have to start the business, the more likely you make a, a higher profit. So if you start with $100, for example, to trade with $100, your profit will be around $1, $2, $3. But if you start with $1,000, your profit will be like $100, $200, $300. So you see, the higher your budget, the higher your, your cost, the more likely you make more profit. So if you start with $100,000, it increases the level of profit you can make. So that's why I gave it a three star rating because for most people, you don't make making $1 a day or $2 a day. You want to be making somewhere like $100, $200 or even $1,000 a day. And because of that, it means that you will need more money to commit into the business. So that's why I'm giving it a three star rating. But an easy way you can go around this point is to use third party trading website like FTMO, all those prop trading firms. So if you use all those prop trading firms, they're more likely to give you a higher amount of money in order to start trading. But if you're using your own money, you don't want to commit $100,000 into a business that you're not sure of making profit. 
Is it easy to make your first hundred dollar? It's not so easy to make your first hundred dollar, and also it's not so difficult to make your first hundred dollar. I've explained to you how it works. The more money you have as your capital, the more likely you make a profit. So if your capital is hundred dollar, I told you that the profit you can make will be around one dollar. But if your starting capital is around one thousand dollars, your profit for one day can be around hundred dollars. So you see. The higher the capital, the more likely your profit. So I want to assume that you have one thousand dollar to start the business. So your profit should be around hundred dollar, which means it's easy to make. And let me at this point say this: for trading, you can make a lot of money and you can lose a lot of money. So it's a lucrative business, but it equally involves a lot of risk. So weigh your options if you really want to go into this business and. If you are skeptical whether you want to start or not, I would encourage you to start with demo account. Do some demo trading and check out how profitable you are before using real capital or real money. So, and the final part is the level of competition. I gave it a five star rating because you are not competing with anybody. I'm doing my trading in my house. You are doing your own trading in your house. So my position does not affect your position. So it's independent. So there's no competition at all. You are not competing with anybody. So I, I give it a five star rating, which means it's easy. There's no competition there for you. My trading does not affect your trading. Your trading does not affect my own trading. The next one we have is cost creation. When you're making courses online and you're posting it on Skillshare, Coursera, Udemy, Thinkific, YouTube, you are someone that make courses and post online. Is it profitable? That's the question. So first of all, we start with, is it easy to start? It's easy to start in the sense that you don't pay any money to start. So you just open an account on Skillshare, on Udemy, which you already have, and you can start posting your courses. But I gave it a four star rating because you may need to do some preparation. It may take some time to prepare your material, to make the video, to edit the video, to write some description for the course before you post. It's not like TikTok where you just take your phone and just make any two minutes video and you post, no. The average number of hours you will see is one hour, two hours for a course. So it involves you like what I'm doing now. You need to have prepared your content, revise your content, think of multiple examples. It's easy, but it's not too easy. So that's why I'm giving it a four star rating. Is it easy to maintain? Of course, once you upload your course on Skillshare, Udemy, Thinkific, Teachable, YouTube, you do nothing else. Except once in a while, you just go and reply to their comment or answer their question if any of your students have questions. But it's very easy to maintain. The starting cost, I give it a five star rating because you're not actually paying any money to start. You're not giving money to anybody in order to start this business. In fact, the company you're posting to will even give you money if students take your course. If you're posting on Udemy, they pay you some money. If you're posting on Skillshare, they pay you money on a monthly basis if students are taking your course. So you are not spending any money to create an account, no. But where you may need to spend money is to buy your equipment. So if you want to use a camera, that may involve some money. But some of us already have our phone, and phone these days have excellent camera quality. So you won't need to stress yourself about buying a camera. Your phone is enough for you to start. And a good number of people, which you will notice, use a recording of their laptop. So if you are using screen recording, it comes for free. In that case, your starting cost is almost zero dollar. Where I really see you spending money is when it comes to buying audio equipment. But you can get a very good audio equipment for $20 on Amazon. So that will not be what you cannot afford in order to start a business. How easy it is to make your first hundred dollar? Hmm. It's not so difficult. It's not so easy. I gave it a faster rating because just like most businesses, there need to be like a rating or a review of your class in order to bring more students to start taking your class. But if you're posting on Skisha, most people, if they like your class, they'll just come naturally without any rating or review and they'll start watching you. And from there, as you grow, you start getting ratings and review. So I'm in the business of making courses. So I will tell you that it's not so difficult to make your first hundred dollars. And also it's not so easy. You may need to post more courses. At the beginning, it's difficult to start earning. But once you have more courses, you can easily scale and start making a lot of money. And that's one thing about side hustle businesses, which I must tell you at this point. 
at the beginning, it's like a slow graph. At the beginning, it's slow, it's slow. Then it's skyrocket. So it's always slow at the beginning. So if you are starting a business and it's slow, don't feel bad. That's the nature of businesses. It doesn't just jump all at once. It takes time. Also, you can make your first hundred dollar easily if you have a huge audience. As you you're a YouTuber and you make some courses, it's very easy for you to bring your YouTube audience to come and watch your courses on Skillshare or Udemy or any other platform. But if you don't have an audience, you are starting from scratch to get people to start watching your, your classes in order to make your first hundred dollar is difficult. Except your course is actually very, very good. If you make a very good course, of course, it's very, it becomes easier for you to make your first hundred dollar. We should give it like a month. You should take like one month for you to make your first hundred dollar. One month, two months, three months. So what the level of competition? Hmm. There's so much competition. If you want to make a course on stock markets, people have made similar course. If you want to make a course on how to water plants, people have made that course. If you want to make a course on how to get a job, people have made that course. So there's a high level of competition when it comes to making courses. It's easy to start, it's easy to maintain, and the starting cost is a five star. And once the top three are five, 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 you should expect stiff competition here. It means a lot of people will be willing and ready to do it. So the competition here will be explosive. So there are a lot of people that made courses about TikTok, Instagram, Facebook ads, one thing or the other. So you have to bring your own uniqueness in order to have a voice. So the next one we have is blogging. I've explained to you about blogging. If you have passion for writing, you can write for yourself or you can be like a content writer and be writing for other blogs. Is it easy to start? Yes, you can have a free account on Wiz, on Squarespace, even on Google Blogger for you to start. People that have like a natural flair for writing. If you have a natural passion for writing about something or expressing your view about something, it can be tourism, it can be sport, it can be tech, whatever you have passion for, and you're very good with writing. Or even speaking to a voice converter, so as you talk to your phone, it will be typing it out like Google Doc. So once you open a Google Doc and you start talking to it, it will help you to type out what you are saying. So your job now is just to proofread it and post it to your blog. So it's easy to start. It's not so easy to maintain. That's why I give it a three star. It's not so easy to maintain because you have to be writing to your blog every week or every month. Some people make like three or five post in one day. It means you need to keep writing and writing and writing and writing. Also, it's not so difficult because it's already your passion. It's what you love doing. This blogging is for people that have passion for it. So since you already have passion for it, I would say it, it's not so difficult for you. But if you don't have passion for it, it can be very difficult. So the starting cost, which is the budget, is five star because you don't spend any money to start a blog. You can start for free on Wiz, on Blogger. You can start your blog for free. How easy it is to make your first $100? Hmm. There are a lot of blogs. So because there are a lot of blogs, to make your first $100 is very, very difficult. In fact, making money through blogging is one of the most difficult way to make money online. Because if you search for something online now, there are a lot of blogs, a lot of posts there that you will see. But as much as it's difficult to make your first $100, you should remember the curve that I, that I gave to you. It starts very slowly, but with time, it will skyrocket. So you need to keep having people to come and read your blog, people that are interested in what you are saying, to be coming over and over again. That will help you to attract people that want to run ads on your blog. And you can make money through affiliate links, through AdSense, through sponsored posts, through selling digital physical product, and also having some gig, speaking gigs, television deals. So your first $100 is difficult and that's the nature of most side hustle businesses the first hundred dollar is difficult but once you're able to make that first hundred dollar you are able to scale into making more so don't be discouraged because of the first one is difficult subsequent ones are always easier they said that it's your first million that's difficult once you've made your first million it becomes very easy to make more millions so the first one is always difficult so don't be deterred because of 
the one star rating. The level of competition is one star because there are so many blogs in one area. If you want to talk about pet, just type pet on Google. And let me type pet. You see, there are different explanations of pet. Wikipedia is explaining pet. Pet at home. There are different write-ups about pet. There's page two, there's page three, there's page four, there's page five C, there's page ten. Different blogs are writing about pet, 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 pet. So before you are lucky to be on the first page of Google in an area, it's not so easy. You would agree with me that it's not so easy to be on the first page of Google. But if you're able to make it to this first page, hmm, it means your blog has really blown up and you can make a lot of money. But if you're not on the first three pages of Google, before you start getting ratings and review and having people coming to your blog to come and read up on a daily basis, it's not so easy. So there's massive level of competition. But it's not what you cannot do. If other people were able to do it and succeed, you too can do it and succeed. So what will help you in order to crush the competition is focus on one niche and write a lot about it. Just look for one niche that you like and write a lot about it. And also, you need to learn about SEO, search engine optimization, in order to help you to trend on the first page of Google. Another side hustle business that you can start from home is podcast. You can do your podcast at the comfort of your house, like this lady, what she's doing. She's doing a podcast from her house. And you can post it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and several other websites. And of course, you can always cross-promote on YouTube. You can post your podcast on all of them and equally post on YouTube. So the way you make money on podcast is most likely by downloads. So if you have 1,000 downloads, businesses are ready to run ads on your podcast for about $25. So you most likely make $25 per 1,000 download. This is how you make money, mostly from podcast. So which means you need to have people that download your podcast over and over again. Or you can also make money from YouTube ads, but that will not be a lot, or may not be a lot. So is it easy to start? Yes, you can start from your own house. Like this lady that we just saw, she's doing the podcast from her house. It's very easy to start. You don't need to buy expensive audio equipment. You can use your phone as a recorder. So is it easy to maintain? It's not so easy to maintain. It's not so difficult to maintain in the sense that you need to ha keep having podcast and podcast and podcast. It's what you do on a daily basis or weekly basis or monthly basis, depending on how often you want to post your podcast. So you just need to keep doing it over and over again. But it's mostly talking. Talk about a particular area, what you know about. So it's easy to talk about it. So that's like give it a foster rating in the sense that you already have passion for it. So it's easy. But it's a first start too because it's what you need to do on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, or on a daily basis. You have to do it over and over again. The starting cost is five star because you can start at little to no cost. Most likely what you need to buy is a microphone. And a microphone, it can range from $10, $20 to $20,000. <laughs> so but I'm still saying it's cheap because you can go for a cheaper option. $20, as long as your audience can hear you clearly and hear you very well. You can start with the cheaper option, so which means the starting budget is low. And you can record yourself with your phone camera. You already have a phone. You don't need to buy an extra phone or a camera in order to record yourself. You can use your phone as a recorder. So except when you want to scale the business that may involve you spending more money. How easy it is to make your first $100? I've told you the nature of side hustle businesses. The first $100 is difficult because you need to have at least 1,000 downloads in order to attract sponsors to your business. So if you don't have 1,000 downloads, it's difficult to get people to come and sponsor your podcast. And to get 1,000 downloads, it's not easy. Except you already have a massive audience from TikTok, YouTube, or another place that you want to bring to watch your podcast. But if you are starting from scratch with no audience, with no followers, it's difficult to get 1,000 downloads. That's the bitter truth. So what's the level of competition? <laughs> it's competitive. I told you once we have easy to start, easy to maintain, and low 
budget to start. There's always a massive competition. There's always a massive competition because anybody can start it. Anybody can do it. It comes at no cost. So it means most people will be doing it. So if you want to talk about sports, there are a lot of sports podcasts. If you want to talk about relationship, there are a lot of podcast on relationship. If you want to talk about selling online, there are a lot of podcasts about selling online. So there's massive competition. So you are just coming to create your own voice, your own uniqueness. In fact, my advice is to learn from other people what they're doing and improve on it. Bring your own uniqueness to it. So the next one we have is online teaching or tutoring teaching online from the comfort of your house. So instead of going to a classroom to teach, you can do the teaching on Skype, on Zoom, on Teams, and you can register on this platform. The average pay is about $20 per hour. So is it easy to start? Of course, it's very easy to start. Just register on the website I've shown you and you can start teaching. Is it easy to maintain? Yes, it's very easy to maintain, but I gave it the first start because you have to keep doing it on a daily basis, hourly basis, or minute basis. So it depends on how often you want to do it. So because it involves a repetition, it's not like print on demand that you do once and forget about it. For online teaching, you have to be doing the teaching every day or every week. It's something that you do over and over again. You do it, you do it, you do it, you do it over and over again. So you are teaching over and over again. But if you are into teaching, you already like teaching. You already know the subject very well you want to teach about. So it's relatively easy to maintain. The second course, I give it a five-star rating because it's cheap to start. You just need to open a free account on these platforms. The account is free. They even pay you to teach. So you're not paying to teach. They pay you for teaching. So you're the one that's getting money for teaching. Not that you are paying money for you to teach, no. So there's no starting budget at all. It's easy to start teaching from your computer. Be teaching the student from your computer. Is it easy to make your first $100? Yes. For teaching, the average pay is $20 for one hour. So which means if you teach five students, which you can do in one week, you get $100. So you see, it's easy to make your first $100 because the average pay is $20 and you just need to teach for like five hours. Split the five hours into five days, so one hour per day in order to get your first hundred dollars so it's very easy to get the first hundred dollars what's the level of competition it's not so competitive also it's not like your students don't have other options so there's competition but the competition is not so stiff and i told you whenever it's a three star rating it means that it's not so competitive and also it doesn't mean that there's no competition it's just in between because your student can choose you or choose other teachers Now, the next one we have is making and selling digital products online. And I've explained to you that you can sell on Etsy, on eBay. You can create a handmade object like this or create a digital object. In fact, we're in the era of NFT where people are creating non fungible tokens and selling it online. Also, you can make ebooks, courses, stock photos, and several things on Canva and sell it online. Is it easy to start? Yes, it's easy to start if you're making digital products. Digital products are easier to make than handmade product. So if your product is a digital product, it's easy, which is a five star. But if it's handmade, it becomes more difficult, which is a three star. So the average of three and five is our four star. Is it easy to maintain? Yes. Once you've made the product, you just wait to post it on the website. So you do nothing else. It's very easy to maintain. The budget, if you're making digital product, you don't necessarily have to spend money. You can make your product on Canva. You see, we have Canva here. You can use Canva for free in order for you to start making your money. So it's relatively easy to start at little to no cost. It's easy to make your first $100. You need to make sales before you start making your first $100. And I told you the nature of online businesses is the first one is difficult. But once you're able to make your first sale, and have positive review, it becomes easier for you to scale. So it's not so difficult, it's not so easy, it's somewhere in between. So that's why I gave it a three star rating because what you want to sell, the other people that have made similar product. And what's the level of competition? Hmm. 
is intense. There's massive competition when it comes to selling digital products. If you go to LC, I'll take you to LC for you to see for yourself. So now we are on LC, you see. If you want to sell popular gift for Christmas, there are a lot of people that have made popular gifts for Christmas. There's stiff competition because if you want to sell clothes, there are different kind of clothes that people are selling. Your own will just be one of them. And anybody that wants to buy have different options to buy and to pick from. There's massive competition when it comes to selling things online. And I told you, remember that if it's easy to start, it's easy to maintain, and the starting cost is low, there's always massive competition for it. Because most people will find it easy to start the business. So also we have freelancing freelancing as a side hustle. And I explained to you a lot about freelancing in the first part of this course, where I illustrated different freelancing jobs you can start, all at the comfort of your house. And I told you that freelancing will keep going up and up in the future. In fact, it's the job of the future. So it just depends on what service you can offer as a freelancer. And you can register on Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer, Guru, and several other freelancing platforms. So it's easy to start. Yes, it's easy to start. Very easy. Just register on Fiverr as a freelancer. It's very easy. It's easy to maintain. It's relatively easy to maintain in the sense that you are registering for a service that you are okay to offer, you are comfortable to offer. So if you are someone that likes writing for blogs, you are going there to register as a content writer, not as someone that's into podcasts. I give it a faster rating because you have to do it over and over again for multiple clients. So there's client A, you offer the service. Client B, you offer the service. Client C, you offer the service. So you have to do it daily basis, weekly basis. So it involves repetition, most likely of the same thing or something similar. So that's why I give it a faster rating instead of a five star rating. The starting cost is easy to start. You don't pay any money to register on Fiverr. They even pay you for offering service. So if you charge like $100 for a service, the way you work is that you take $80 and Canva will take 20%, $20. So which means they're paying you to offer a service, not that you are paying them. Is it easy to make your first $100? It's not so easy, it's not so difficult to make your first $100. In the sense that when it comes to making your first $100, it depends on how much you are charging. If you are charging like $10 for a service, to make your first $100 will take like 10 people offering the same $10 over and over again. But if you are charging like $100, it becomes relatively easy to make your first $100. So it's not so easy, it's not so difficult. It depends on how much you are charging. And when it comes to competition, let me show you an example of competition. So you see, we are on Fiverr, and if you search for a service, let's use any service like Canva. So you are someone that wants to offer service on Canva. See, there are different people that offer similar services. That offer similar service. See them, you see? They even on page one. There is even page 10. There's page 14 of people offering the same service. So you see, there's massive competition when it comes to offering service as a freelancer. The competition is stiff, especially if you are using Fiverr. So that's why we encourage you to register on multiple platforms. And that's what you should do when you are starting. It's a way to be smart with the system. Because there's always massive competition in one place. So you register on multiple platforms so that you can start getting customers to offer service to. So you register on Fiverr, on Guru, on Freelancer, on Upwork, on different platforms that will help you when it comes to the competition level. But for most online businesses that are easy to start, easy to maintain, there's always massive competition.